against Kentucky, who should be angry after being embarrassed and humiliated at home, losing at Rupp Arena to BMI. But this North Carolina team, when they have Hansbro and Ginyard, will be very deep, they'll be very versatile, they're well coached, and they'll be the team to beat. The beauty of college basketball, it's not four out of seven, baby. Yeah. It's one night, and in college hoops, you can get upset. But there'll be something special building here this year in Chapel Hill. Carolina beat Penn 86 to 71 in their season opener. Kentucky, as Dick mentioned, lost at home to VMI 111 to 103. Even though there's no hands, bro, there are lots of stars on display tonight here in Chapel Hill. Ty Lawson, the point guard for the Tar Heels, and Jody Meeks had himself some kind of a night in spite of the loss to VMI. Well, you know, Meeks scored and scored big, but he took 27 shots. They're going to get some shots from Patterson. Lawson's the key to North Carolina. Last year, they gave up 42% field goal percentage was their numbers. They got to do a better job defensively, and that starts with pressure on the ball. Let's go tonight to, I know, your pick for the star watch on our team, Aaron Anders. Yes. Wow, Dan Schulman, <laughs> thank you so much. Dick Benson, Patrick Patterson, needing to shoot the ball tonight. His coach would like to see that. Very unhappy with Patrick Patterson against BMI. He attempted a career low, just four shot attempts. Not happy at all. Billy Gillespie telling us today we need to utilize him more. We cannot ignore him. And he guaranteed Patrick Patterson will play better. Patterson did a little chirping of his own in the media this week, Dan, saying the BMI loss will serve as a motivational tool. He also said that could cause problems for UNC. Now, Roy Williams telling us today his freshman, Tyler Zeller, Ed Davis, they have to play well against Patterson tonight. They said if you don't stand tall, box out and finish, he will bury you in the bleachers. Right into that student section that's going nuts underneath the basket to our left. The starting lineups tonight, we begin with the visiting Cats. Michael Porter, Jody Meeks off the big game in the backcourt. Ramon Harris, Perry Stevenson, and the man in the middle is Patrick Patterson. So much talent for UNC, even with Hansbro and Ginyard out. And keep an eye on Tyler Zeller, the freshman Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana a year ago. Underway, and it's the Cats and the visiting Kentucky Blue who get the first possession of the night. Well, the key to the game is going to be the point guard player, Kentucky. They were absolutely not really effective at all against VMI. Patterson gets a touch, gives it up, and the three is way long for Jody Meeks, but an offensive rebound for Kentucky. You know, Meeks had so many injuries last year. He's healthy this year, and he's certainly going to put a lot of points on the board. Two shot attempts, didn't draw a rim on either. 39 points against VMI. 18 more than he had ever scored in a college game. But he took 27 shots, yeah. Dan, and I think they'd like to have a better distribution. As Aaron Andrews said, it said so well, the ball's got to go inside to Patterson. And Carolina was looking for a high-low between the big guys right there. Danny Green shut off on the baseline. Here's one of the keys to the Tar Heels. Ty Lawson with an off-balance leaner. You know, after that a shot, we've seen that. At the other end, the answer for Ramon Harris. Well, Harris, a good athlete, got out of transition. North Carolina did a very poor job getting back defensively. And usually it's teams playing against Carolina who are worried about transition defense because Roy Williams wants the Heels to run at every opportunity. Ellington slithers inside and the follow is there for Deion Thompson. You know, Thompson's a guy that's got to be much more consistent. Last year, at the end of the year, he really struggled. He started off in his first game, played very effectively this year. And now he's got himself a steal. Going to the rim, lays it in strong. That would be a big plus if they get consistency out of Thompson. Especially with Hansborough out. Thompson's coming off a 17.7 rebound effort against Penn. Make no doubt about it. The insertion of Hansborough in the lineup takes him to a whole nother level. He brings a passion, a toughness, a tenacity. And he's also a cheerleader. <laughs> he's a cheerleader. As the steal defensively, played the passing lane really well. Good denial. Good agility, taking it to the goal. That's a 6-9 power forward run on the floor. He's got two field goals early tonight for the Heels. Ellington. Came in just as a standstill shooter. A nice drive there, although he could not convert. And back comes Kentucky. Here's Meeks. Well, he is being aggressive here tonight. Three shots, two of them have been blocked. Well, very aggressive offensively, but not a good shot right there. Lawson switches hands in and out. Rebound Thompson. And it'll stay with Carolina. Deion Thompson strong in the early going. And that is music to the ears of head coach Roy Williams.
Taylor Roy was telling us before the game tonight as we talk about he said he inserted Hansbro into a set for about eight minutes offensively yeah. and he said the whole team elevated to another level just yesterday Hansbro started taking jump shots walking through just practicing lightly with the team they hope to have him back in Maui next week but Roy Williams emphasized we really don't know it's a stress reaction in his right shin the better Thompson plays maybe the more conservative and cautious they can be about bringing back Hansbro. Well, I'll tell you this right now, looking at the Kentucky defense, it's not existent right there. Allowing the ball inside too easily. Stevenson with a miss on the inside, one of the foul call. Back come the heels. You know, Billy Gus replies himself on defense. You can't allow to get the ball in that deep. Yeah. And we're less than three minutes in, but Patrick Patterson has not gotten a good look on the inside, hasn't gotten a good touch. Well, the reason, you can see how they're struggling out on the perimeter. Really struggling to make that pass. We're going to watch the ball going in real deep. So you can't let the guy get the ball in there. I mean, you let me get the ball in there. I'm going to score. <laughs> I'm 69. I got uh, one eye. You saw my moves. I saw, I saw your moves. <laughs> Eight to two. A great start for Carolina. Porter, the kick. And the three a little bit short by Meeks, who's already attempted four shots tonight. Another offensive rebound for the Cats. This time it'll be Harris. And Kentucky called in the early going, staying in it only because of offensive rebound. You know, Patrick Patterson was so effective last year. We saw how agile. Nice pass by Patterson. And a hell ball after a great defensive play by Deion Thompson. You know, Patrick's got to be a little bit more aggressive or offensively. The arrow gives it to Carolina. We're going to watch this defensive play. All ball. And a great job getting that defensively. Boy, Deion Thompson has been a star here tonight. Well, he's got a chance to be a star with yeah. Hansbro sitting on the sideline. Danny Green, one of three Tar Heels who thought about going to the NBA. Here's another one, and Ty Lawson had a great effort there by Perry Stevenson to come over and block it. And now Stevenson does a great job in terms of defensively blocking shots, and he got better and better as the year progressed for Kentucky. Sloppy play by the Wildcats, their fourth turnover already. Danny Green for three. He can dance. And he can shoot. He can dance and get the crowd going. He may want to go on dancing with the stars with Aaron Andrews. Because I can't go. Timeout, Kentucky. Already down by nine. Kentucky losing at home to VMI in their first game, trailing by nine. Second year for Billy Gillespie at Lexington. He thinks this is going to be a better team, but they've got some point guard concerns. Well, you know, I think the key for them is going to be ultimately playing DeAndre Liggins at the point guard, the freshman. He'll give him some versatility, some size. He's a guy that will stuff the stat sheet. He'll turn the ball over a little bit because he's young, learning how to play. But I think if you're going to beat Kentucky, you're going to have to go with Liggins at that point guard slot. Wiggins, a freshman, a big kid, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, tremendously talented, and he'll start getting more and more minutes. Michael Porter is the starter right now at the point, a junior from Modesto, California. Meets with another shot from the perimeter. Kentucky Dick, one for eight, four turnovers. Well, they're not getting the ball inside. There's no touches inside, outside action. Here's Ed Davis, one of the freshmen, and the lefty spins to the right shoulder and shows a soft touch. Hey, Dan, that's what I talked about a moment ago. Getting the ball in deep too easily, not keeping the ball away from the post players. Now a steal by Bobby Fraser, and it's all Carolina, except the layup spins out of him. Wow. He had a gimme. Wow. He's coming, oh boy. coming back from an injury, Bobby. A kid you, you really root for. He's had a multiple injuries over the years. Yeah, and I should believe that he gets a break in the NCAA allow him another year of eligibility. I think the first request was turned down, but they're appealing it. And he's lost so many games in his career. Yeah. Legitimate injuries. A great ball pressure by Carolina. Patterson unable to get open on the inside. And another turnover, number six, Lawson. Yes! Yeah, he gets the acrobatic with the fall. Lawson with that blurring speed. I tell you, they're out of sync offensively when you look at Kentucky. They cannot get any offensive sets going. Patterson calling for the ball. Zelleron is back on the inside. You know, he was open right there, and they missed him. Meeks off balance, tough shot, but he does draw the foul. I mean, if you're Patterson right now, they got to take advantage of the matchup with Zeller, who's a young kid who can shoot the ball. Kentucky can't put anything in the net, and Carolina's making them pay time after time after time at the other end.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by the Samsung Behold. Amazing phone meets amazing camera. Enterprise Rent-A-Car, we'll pick you up. And NCAA Basketball 09, be proud, be loud. Vote online for the toughest place to play. Hour 22 of the College Hoops Tip-Off Marathon. We're here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where the Tar Heels, even without Tyler Hansbro and Marcus Guignard, are off to a sensational start tonight against a team in Kentucky that appears to be a little bit overwhelmed right now. 15 to 2 heels. Let's go to Aaron Andrews. And Dan, you know, this morning at shoot-around, Billy Gillespie told us in that VMI loss, he really felt his team just lacked leadership. He said, beginning with the head coach, and he said, no, I'm serious. I, I really don't think I coached to my best ability. He also felt that VMI outfought them. They didn't get to all the loose balls. VMI outhustled the Wildcats, kind of like what we're seeing right now. We also mentioned we were playing soft around the basket. The Kidats were tougher than us. Guys, this is a lot like what we're seeing right now. I'll tell you one thing, Aaron. As a coach, don't blame yourself too often because after a while, people will just start to believe you and you can be in trouble. I'll tell you one thing. Billy Gillespie's a fighter, scrapper, recruiter. He's got some great kids coming in next year. But I think Liggins ultimately is going to be that point guard and play for them at that perimeter position. Just remember this if you're Kentucky fans. They struggled last year out of the game, and at the end of the year, they were 12 and 4 in conference point. And made the NCAA tournament, losing the close game in the first round of Arquette. We have some subs in as Larry Drew, a freshman out of Encino, California, has checked into the point for the Tar Heels and for Kentucky. Their top two freshman talents, Derek. Darius Miller out of Maysville, Kentucky, and the young point guard you were talking about, DeAndre Liggins, a 6'6 freshman from Chicago. That's him, number 34. He's got a little bounce to his game. Miller's a guy they think's going to become special. They want to allow him to get away. They jumped on him right away in recruiting because, remember, he came to the same school as Chris Lofton. They lost Lofton. Meeks is shooting or driving every single time he has the ball. Maybe that's a, a part of scoring 39 points his last time out, but he is really forcing some difficult looks. He's an offensive player. He's got offensive skills, but he's got to understand shots will come to him a lot better yeah. if he gets a little bit more interior play out of Patterson. Ellington, nice drive and kick, and the shot knocked down by Deion Thompson, who's already got eight. I think he looks really solid right now. Looks much improved from last year. Playing a lot, a lot of confidence. That defense is a lot better. I think North Carolina's defense, Roy's got to be very happy with the defensive effort. They were the second highest scoring team in the NCAA a year ago, almost 89 points. And look at Ellington, who again came to Chapel Hill with a reputation strictly as a shooter, but he can put it on yep. the floor and distribute now as well. Well, he created a two-man play there, played in high school with Gerald Henderson from out of Duke. We'll see Duke in a few days in New York and the coaches versus cancer against Southern Illinois, UCLA, and Michigan in the second game Thursday night. Dr. Ben Holland loves his young kids. He thinks ultimately they're going to be very good. Are they as good as they were last year right now? He says, of course not. That way you lose love in Westbrook and company. Ellington, the miss, you'll do the second game with me. Who's the new guy we're working wow. in the first game on Thursday? I tell you what, he'll do a great job with you, Robert Montgomery. Yeah. Nice. Does the jam inside. Double figures already for a pumped-up Deion Thompson and Tyler Hansbrough's first up off the bench. I'm going to tell you, two things are happening here in North Carolina. They're doing a better job defensively than they did earlier last year. And number two, they're making that extra pass, getting the high-percentage shot. Kentucky Dick, one of nine, seven turnovers. Well, that's what I'm going to tell you. Two factors with Kentucky. Not good ball distribution offensively yeah. and not doing a good job defensively. Here's Make another turnover. turnover. Here comes Drew. A lot of turnovers tonight, and not Apple turnovers either. <laughs> Drew tries to kick it back in. Thompson had it, lost it. The heels give it away. Here come the Cats. The number's not in their favor. Patterson wow, gets his first gets look ball. inside. He finally gets the rock, baby. Somebody better introduce himself to Mr. Patterson. But even that is a broken play. They haven't got him the basketball inside in the half court at all. I tell you what, he did a poor job defensively there. Never yeah. saw a ball you man. You must see both. Patrick turned his back to the ball. Played in high school with O.J. Mayo. He's right now making a strong run. Potentially yeah. be rookie of the year. He is scoring in bunches in the NBA. First foul on Perry Stevenson. Ed Davis to the line 
for Carolina. The freshman who had a double double 10 points 14 rebounds in his opening game against Penn. You can see his dad Terry played in the NBA and Davis was Mr. Basketball in the state of Virginia a year ago. You know he doesn't look strong as Roy said but he can really go up and grab rebounds. He goes laterally. He also can block shots. That's a dimension. They didn't have two factors I thought that are vital to be a good defensive team. They didn't have a shot blocker last right. year because Tyler Hansbrough's not a shot blocker. And number two, I didn't think Lawson did a good job pressuring the basketball. And that's why team shot 42% against them for the year. Now this year, Lawson healthier, a year more experienced. Again, he contemplated going to the NBA, as did Ellington, as did Green. Not they all came back. Here comes Green. Ellington open in the corner. That's like a layup for him. If he can square his body, it's like a layup. Look at that run and jump. There's that run and jump defense. I tell you, they're really out of sync. Yeah. And that's all because of Carolina's defense. Ellington oh, on showtime. showtime. This club, can you imagine? You have Tyler Hansbrough. You have Marcus Ginyan. Are you serious, baby? And Chapel Hill, there's going to be a lot of fun for the Carolina fans. Wow. My friend, we're seeing him without the best player in the nation. Yep. We're seeing him without a defensive dynamite player. And they are absolutely explosive. Sharing the ball, forcing turnovers. Showtime, as you said. Ellington knocking it down. Thompson dominating inside. It's all Carolina here so far tonight. Well, I think a lot of it's due to their defensive effort. I think their tenacity defensively has really impressed me. On the other side, I'm really disappointed by North by looking at the offensive setup and the way they're executing for Kentucky. And I think the Kentucky fans, who are some of the most passionate fans in all of basketball, they do a great job, have to be really disappointed with the kind of execution and efficiency that they're seeing out of the Kentucky team. Obviously, a tremendously difficult test this early in the season, Hansbro or no Hansbro. Yeah, there's no excuse for them losing no, to right. BMI. Yep. None whatsoever yep. at home. Now, Billy, now, Gillespie, really yeah. gotta win that. Now, Billy Gillespie says last year the Gardner Webb loss was more devastating. He thought it was really a sign of, of trouble to come. This year, he thought the BMI game more of a blip. He does feel more confident in this team's ability than the team a year ago, even though Joe Crawford and Mel Bradley have exhausted their eligibility. Meets for three. He's right there, showing that range he has. Lawson forcing the issue, and he's fouled before the shot. A timeout on the floor. Carolina without their best player up by 16. More on the All-American situation when we come back. In the long storied history of North Carolina basketball, there have been four consensus national players of the year. Phil Ford, 1978. The incomparable Michael Jordan in 1984. Antoine Jameson in 1998. And Tyler Hansbrough in 2008. That's enough to get Hansbrough's jersey retired, but it's not enough to get him back in the lineup right now. A stress reaction in his right shin. He has yet to play this season. An uncertain timetable. Let's find out the latest from Aaron Andrews. Well, Dan, you and I had a chance to actually visit with Tyler today when he took the court and started shooting the ball without his teammates. And Tyler Hansbrough loves to play basketball. That's really all he likes to do. We tried to get him to tell us how disappointed he is not being a part of all this. Spoke to Roy Williams after shoot around, and he said, yes, his superstar is very unhappy not to be part of the action right now. It has been difficult for him because he wants to play so badly. And I mean, he's just chomping at the bits kind of thing. And uh, I just decided to get on him a little bit more publicly. But he's, uh, as you know, he's just a wonderful kid. But he is dying to play. And uh, I had to sit him down and say, now, when I ask you, I've got to get the truth. Don't tell me what you want to do. Tell me the truth. Now, it doesn't mean just because Tyler's not playing right now, he doesn't have that great sense of humor that Roy Williams told us all about. But, Dan, just to reiterate what you mentioned today, head coach Roy Williams did say they're hoping Tyler will play in Maui. But, quote, unquote, they just don't know. That seems to be the key phrase here in Chapel Hill. 
And Aaron, it's the kind of injury, Dick, as you know, it's the kind of injury that could go away or it's the kind of injury that could linger and get worse. It's really something that it's up to Hansbro to tell the coaching staff how he feels, and they want to be very, very careful about pushing him back too quickly. Well, he also gets medical advice from home as well. His dad's an orthopedic yeah. surgeon. I think it's great that he came back to school. But again, remember this. He came back. He's a little financial situation different than a lot of kids. And certainly uh, when kids decide to go out with a stroke of a pen, they can change the life of their family. I really don't like the one and done. It is great and very rare to see a player of the year return. The last guy to go back to back player of the year, Ralph Sampson, wow. back in the early 80s. In fact, Ralph is the only player ever to win three consecutive National Player of the Year's awards, and he's not in the National Basketball Hall of Fame. I think that's wrong. Hansborough's got a chance to go down as Carolina's all time leading scorer and rebounder if he gets healthy relatively quickly and has the kind of season that he had last year. Patterson a nice touch pass. inside and a no look pass with a slam to Harris. Well, see, that's the kind of execution Kentucky should be getting. You got a guy like Patterson who touches the basketball, he finds the open man, he can pass, he can score, bring the ball inside to the big guy. Look at him posting up big and strong inside. There he is now with the dish. The defense rotated over. He has good vision. He's an excellent post player. He can be the best low post player in the SEC. Just picked up his foul, a foul, his first, and Danny Green will go to the line for the Tar Heels, one of the best sixth men in the nation last year, starting right now because Ginyard is out, but Roy Williams has options once Ginyard gets healthy, and they're hoping that originally it was supposed to be the middle of December, but Roy told us today he's a little behind schedule, had surgery for a stress fracture in his left foot, and it's kind of sounding now, Dick, like maybe it's conference play before Ginyard gets back. That's a lot of talent sitting over there in suits. Well, in the game of basketball, five players, you got 40%. Then you factor in a hands you add another 20%. So that's about 60% of your team. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, Kentucky played a little better in the last possession. This game is far from over. I'm telling you, if they can really just find themselves in a half-court game, they get a little confidence. Meek starts making some shots like he did right there. They're going to work to try and get it down to 10 at halftime. Meeks now now with seven, Lawson. Zeller's got it. Older brother plays at Notre Dame. Tyler turns it over. Harris at the other end, lays it in. Here comes Kentucky. Nice play right there. I see a little bit better bounce in his step out of Kentucky. A lot of that happened because they made a couple of plays in a half court set. Gave him a little confidence. They started one for nine, Dick. Now they've made five in a row. Ellington, good help defense right there, but a foul is called. Well, the 2K Sports Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer is on ESPN2 Thursday night with both semifinal games. These are the four teams who won their regions. It'll be Duke and Southern Illinois, and then UCLA and Michigan, a great doubleheader. We're seeing some great young talent, some freshmen here on Carolina. Both Duke and UCLA are working in young players as well. UCLA's lost three starters from the team that went to the Final Four again last year, but they've got legitimate Final Four hopes again this year. Well, because the Collison was an absolute superstar, made my first team All-American team. Drew Holiday's going to be a special player. Good job defensively rotating, taking the charge. You look at Duke. Duke's got a veteran club. And when Greg Polis doesn't start, that tells me yeah. you got a pretty good basketball team. Nolan I know Smith my, starting at the point right now. You know, they had a tough time with Jimmy Barron and company. Barron made eight threes. His dad does a great job coaching. And I'll tell you one thing, Barron is an unbelievable shooter for Rhode Island. Patterson sits down. Liggins goes out with his second foul. Porter is back into the point. And A.J. Stewart, a 6'7 sophomore out of Jacksonville, into the game for the first time for the Wildcats. You know, Porter's a kid that's going to give you everything he has, play with a lot of emotion, play hard, a little limited in terms of his skills. We've got another player with junior college transfer, Kevin Galloway, who's a little bit behind Porter and Liggins in terms of how he has played so far. So he's number three on the depth chart at the point. You might even see, and they don't want to do this, but you might even see Jody Meeks at the point from time to time for Kentucky. Look at Thompson. He is having some kind of a night. He really is the fact that offensively rebound and get a good post position. He's active. He's playing very confident, very active on that baseline. And there's a foul out on the perimeter by Tyler Zeller. 
You know, you talk about two of the winningest programs in basketball. Kentucky with 1,966 wins. North Carolina, 1,951, followed by Kansas and Duke. I'll tell you, though, Carolina gained 18 on Kentucky last year, and they're going to gain some more on them this year. They, they might pass Kentucky as the winningest program pretty soon. Well, you know, you look at the national championship numbers. UCLA stands tall with 11, Kentucky with 7, Indiana with 5, North Carolina with 4. Indiana with five because of our guy who works with us, Robert Montgomery Knight. Part of the game day crew here tonight, all the Saturday prime games in January, February, and also doing uh, select games in the early season and on Thursday nights in conference play as an analyst. Yeah, he'll do a great job, and I'll tell you this. I, I, I hope I don't get on the bandwagon about how they should name the arena after him, but Tom Green, get it done. <laughs> get it done down there. Green high off the backboard. Shot clock does not reset. The save... The catch by Green, eight on the shot clock, open is true. His father was a heck of a player, remember his daddy? Yep. Daddy Drew, played at Missouri. That's what Roy Williams said to us earlier tonight, you know what, if, if any game gets into our 8-9-10 against whoever else is 8-9-10, yeah, he likes their chances. The young guys are the 8-9-10, but they're playing great. Nice clear out, nice drive right there by Porter. And it's only going to get better in the future. What a class he has coming in. First points of the night for Porter. North Carolina considered to have one of the top two or three recruiting classes yeah. coming in next year. Some people say the best of the nation. Davis inside. He's a lefty. Got it knocked away. Forced the pass cross court. And it's out of bounds to Kentucky as we go to a timeout. Here at the Dean Dome, a great start for the number one team of the nation. Up by 14. Here and here's what's happening on Sports Center right now. Texas defensive coordinator Will Muschamp has been designated the head coach in waiting when head coach Mac Brown retires. Muschamp is in his first year with the Longhorns. The Red Sox Dustin Pedroia won the AL MVP award Tuesday, becoming the first second baseman to earn the honor since Nellie Fox in 1959. Next Sports Center after the game, always stay current with ESPN News. Dan and Dick, back to you in Chapel Hill. Wow, Petroya MVP, he deserved it. I thought he deserved the MVP. Year. I thought Ryan Howard deserved it. I love Albert Pujols' numbers, but I always believe to the victor goes the spoils. And what he did down the stretch in September, I thought Mr. Howard should have had that gold trophy. Welcome back to our coverage of the College Hoops Tip-Off Marathon presented by Samsung, Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Aaron Andrews, the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill. It was an awful start for Billy Gillespie's Wildcats. They made a bit of a run, but now North Carolina has extended the lead back out to 14. Deion Thompson, statistically the big story so far tonight, 12 points and 6 rebounds already. That's him with the ball right now, guarded by Josh Harrelson, big guy, number 55 for Kentucky. Drew almost turned it over. Thompson looking for help, plenty of time. Nice bounce pass inside. Davis again spins to the strong hand and misses the jump, misses the hook shot from about 10 feet away. Allison, a big wide body. He can shoot the ball. Give him a high low presence. He can shoot the ball up on top. Junior college player. He's a sophomore from St. Charles, Missouri. Porter using that off arm. The Carolina bench was yelling for an offensive foul. Patterson off to Porter. Way short on the three. Got it back. Patterson's only taken one shot thus far. They got to get some better angles, bring the ball to the wing, and dump it into the post. And that was on a broken play. Again, in the half-court offensive sets, they have been unable to get the ball inside. He's got to be able to be a little bit more active and move. He's having to step out just to get a touch. Meeks misses the three. Good rebound in traffic by Davis. You know, Meeks is going to be a scorer, but he's going to have to understand what a good shot is. He's going to have to do a better job defining shot selection. Fraser playing with a bit of a sore left ankle. He's missed a lot of time the last two years with injuries. Now, Harrelson is called for the foul. Take a look at the new line now. It's moved back another foot, going to 20 foot nine. The question will be whether or not it's going to affect some shooters. I think it's going to put the ball in the hands of really quality shooters. I think one foot means a lot. That's the NBA line. The one thing I don't like, look at all the lines out there. Look at all those lines. I mean, they can't figure out. The referees are going to go absolutely bananas. There should be more uniformity between the women's line and the men's so line. So you'd like to see the women's line move down yeah, to 20 feet 9 inches exactly. Get well. uniformity. Harrelson cannot handle the pass. Had himself an easy two points. 
see right now, Patterson's got to get more active. He stands around a little bit too much. There he is on now, the Ted, follow. Good job right there. He got right down the lane. He said, heck, they're not going to get me the ball. I'll just offensively rebound. Second field goal of the night for Patterson. The deficit is 12 for Kentucky. Lawson penetrates. Nice bounce pass and the slam for Thompson. That's just terrific two-man play. All created by an offensive whiz who has the ability to break a defense down with his dribble penetration. Imagine what the day was like, and it was within 24 hours when Roy Williams found out Ty Lawson, Wayne Ellington, and Danny Green were all coming back to college instead of going to the NBA. Well, I'm going to tell you something I have a problem with. I don't like the length of time that young players can take in making that decision. I think that they should be able to make a decision a lot sooner. You end up holding the school hostage. That's right. I really think, you know, yeah. the ACC is proposing moving it up to maybe 10 days after the NCAA tournament. I think that's I a little too early, you. though. But at least within three, three weeks, they should be able to make a decision. Let's go for more. Let's go to Aaron Andrews. Talking about Ty Lawson, Wayne Ellington, Danny Green staying. Tyler Hansbrough said he actually stayed away from those three guys because he said it was a personal decision, Dan, and he just didn't want to bother them when they were trying to make it. You mentioned what a day it was for Roy Williams when he got the news that those three guys were coming back to school. Party at Roy Williams' house. He even mentioned to us, wow. can you imagine if those three guys hadn't come back and we had started this season with all these injuries to Ginyard and Hansbrough? Different situation. Well, again, his 8, 9, 10 would have been his 5, 6, 7 as those, as those guys stayed in the NBA draft. By the way, that was Bobby Fraser who just nearly turned it over with great work right in front of us, Dick, to force the held ball and the 13th Kentucky turnover of the game. And I don't think there would be too many coaches that would have cried over the fact that he would have lost those three kids no. to the NBA. No. And I'll tell you this, they still would have had a pretty good team in building around Tyler Hansbrough. Meanwhile, Billy Gillespie's got to wonder what he has to do to have his team take care of the ball. They turned it over 25 times against VMI, 13 times already tonight. Now Carolina gives it up. A scrum, still loose, Ellington has it, and he's fouled. ESPN's coverage of the NBA begins at 7.30 Eastern time tomorrow night with Kia NBA shoot-around. And at 8 Eastern, it's the Mavericks taking on the Rockets. The second game at 10.30 Eastern, Derrick Rose and the Chicago Bulls, Greg Oden and the Portland Trailblazers, the last two number one overall picks in the NBA draft. You know, I don't think we're going to see kids of that quality this year in the freshman class. Certainly Tyreek Evans looks like he's going to be special man in Memphis. And there'll be a lot of good freshman players. But I don't think we're going to see the Beasleys and the Roses. Yeah. I'm really against the one and done. I think it really becomes a sham in terms of academics. I don't think kids really are concerned academically at all if they're coming in for that one year and out. I would like to see a rule allowing the Roses and Beasleys to go to the NBA if that's what they want. But everyone else that comes on a college campus has to remain for three years. Like baseball does. Like baseball yeah. does. Like Carolina's getting after it defensively. And as much as Roy Williams loves to run, loves his team to score, he says he knows if they're going to win it all, they're going to play defense. play defense. Yeah, exactly. You look at that final game last year against Kansas when they were down 28 in that game in the semifinals, their final game. They were down 28. They cut it to four, had a chance to get it to one. The ball went out. But uh, Kansas was just too good. Trapping again in the half court. Kentucky gets out of it. Here's Darius Miller. Jump stop off the glass. Too strong. Rebound Zeller. He's the kid I'm looking for to really elevate his game. They tell me that Miller can be ultimately a special player in a Kentucky uniform. Well, we asked Billy Gillespie this morning, what do you like about Miller? And this is his quote. Everything. He said he's really, 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 really smart. That's <laughs> pretty just, good. That's pretty smart. Now How many really? About four really? Four really? Yeah. What about if they ask you about me? You wouldn't use any reallys for me. <laughs> I'd, I'd start with two. You'd start have to work two. for the other two. <laughs> the foul on Miller, and that'll send Ty Lawson to the line. A sold-out crowd and a good atmosphere here at the Dean Dome. So much excitement around this program entering this season. They won the national championship as recently as 2005, but they're hungry for another one here this season. Well, in 2005, didn't it have four first-round draft choice? That was McCants and Felton oh, and May. Unbelievable. And Roy Williams? Williams? You asked Roy Williams, yeah. is, is this, this your best, best team, team ever? And he talked about 05 Carolina 97. and 97 Kansas. Talk about yeah. that Kansas team with Paul Pierce, LaFrance, Jacques Vaughn. That was a special team. Hey, let me tell you this. You mentioned VMI, right? 
upsetting, yes. shocking everybody. Yes. What about some shocks? Are you ready for some shocks? Northeastern's already beaten Providence. Portland beat Washington. Rockhurst over Loyola, Illinois. Now I'm going to give you that one that blew my mind. Southwest Baptist. Southwest Baptist beat the University of Utah. I ask you a question. Where is Southwest Baptist? I never heard of them. I went and looked it up. Yeah. That's in Boulevard, Missouri. Southwest Baptist. Wow. Lawson. Ellington. And a great recovery by Miller. Got a finger on that shot. Kentucky looks to run. Patterson with a catch and a finish. Great I mean, play. that's a big-time play right there to be able to catch that ball in transition. Patterson has special all over him. Cannot recover to get back in time, though, as Ed Davis lays it in. And the freshman having his second good game in as many games for North Carolina. Davis is going to be a heck of a player here on that baseline. Michael He's Porter, in, the offensive foul. He's going to be a quality guy coming off that bench. Late stages, first half, Carolina dominating Kentucky. Two of the great programs in the history of college basketball. Kentucky with the most wins of any program. North Carolina second and gaining. A poll right now available to you on ESPN.com. Which of these two story programs has been the most successful, the most impressive? And we'll give you the results later on. Can you wow. separate between the two? Could well, you pick one over the other? I mean, you think about both programs. You think about so much greatness. You think about the coaches. It starts with certainly the Baron. You think about Dean Smith. You think about Rick Pitino. You think about when you look at Kentucky, the great years they've had with so many terrific players over the years. Same with Carolina. Just two great. I, lo I look at their uniforms. Yeah. I get more. <laughs> well, last we saw online, it was about a dead heat, 50-50 between the two. That is not the way this game has gone here tonight. It's been all Carolina from the outset. Will Graves call for the offensive foul. See, I think if Kentucky's going to elevate their game to really challenge good people, it's going to have to start defensively. That's the one area Billy Gillespie's got to be able to convince their team to play on the defensive side. Something earlier in the season that they have not seen in the early yeah. part of the year. Now, VMI's the team that shoots quickly so the score is elevated. Yeah. It's still giving up 111 points. Well, they led the nation now two years in yeah. a row. I mean, they're going to score of points. Kid and Travis Holmes had a great game at 30. They said he was beaten after the game. He yeah. should. Makes inside, looking for Patterson, gets it back. 16 Kentucky turnovers. 16 turnovers in 17 and a half minutes. Can't win basketball games turning the ball over like that. Lawson and a block at the other end. Now, Billy Gillespie said this morning, this is about the hardest working team he's ever coached. The work ethic is great. They're doing everything that he asked them to do. But right now, they're in over their heads. They're having trouble executing offensively. They're limited personnel-wise on a perimeter. They're really limited in terms of skilled, dynamite players on that perimeter. And Kentucky, with their great facility, they probably got the greatest practice facility you'll ever see. I mean, that is yep. unbelievable if you ever see their new yep. facility. It's incredible. I mean, they're going to attract some great players. Ellington, too deep into the defense. Harrelson with the block. Orton coming in next year should be a major player in the baseline. A kid named Villarino, a very quick player. Question is, is he good enough to step in and take them to where they want to be? Miller in trouble. 17 Kentucky turnovers. Wow. Wow. It's turnover city, baby. It's turnover city. Coming up next on the UPS Halftime Report, right here from the Dean Smith Center, Reese Davis, Jay Billis, Hubert Davis, Digger Phelps, and Coach Bob Knight. A look at the first half of this game. How good is Davidson? Uh, Stephen Curry and Davidson, can they do it again, what they did last year? And Richmond take it on Syracuse tonight in a very, very close game. Tune in for the highlights. Well, you know, Davidson hooking up right now against Oklahoma. You got Stephon Curry going against Blake Griffin. Boy, Remember Blake that Griffin name? Something, yes, sir. Uh, Griffin may yep. be a great player. We know how good Curry is. From the corner, the three for Will Graves, who in limited minutes last year shot the ball very well, made 19 out of 43 threes a year ago. I tell you, these kids just buy in to wear that uniform and play with a sense of pride. No moan about minutes. Meets the miss. Green with the long lead pass for Lawson. What a pass back to Allington, but he can't make the reverse. You know what's the great play there? The instincts of Lawson. 
He had the idea. He knew where his teammate was. And you know what you have to love? Those are the three guys who thought about going to the NBA. And Roy Williams said to them, guys, if you come back, it's not about you. It's about the team. You're not going to get a ton of shots. You've got to play like a team. I don't want to disappoint him. If they went to the NBA, it would have been struggle city. Yes. I mean, first yeah. of all, Islands, it was not going to be drafted real high in the first round. Plus, it might have been a late first rounder. Green would not have been. So, I mean, what choice? They made the right choice putting no on question. that North Carolina uniform. So many kids make the wrong choices because they listen to the wrong people. They listen to their entourage and listen to all the guys that fill their heads up with visions of grandeur. I mean, that league is tough. Yep. You talk about the next level. There's some pretty good players in that league. And Roy Williams knows that, and he was thrilled to have the three guys back. They all wanted to come back. They enjoy college life, have a chance to win a national championship. Hey, you and I are going to do an NBA game together. I heard about wow. that. Wow. I thought Dan I Steer was kidding. Oh, I haven't been to an NBA game. I can't wait to do it. I'm going to do an NBA game. Dan Steer called me and goes, Bob Knight's going to do college games with you, and Dick Vitale's going to do an NBA game wow. with you in Denver. I said... You know, are you kidding me? Where's the camera that you're doing in January, right? Well, I know you're so excited working with Coach Knight. You got your autograph book out. You never asked me for an autograph. <laughs> Here's Lawson. Sloppy right there. Thompson. Ooh. And it is swatted away on the inside by Stevenson. Perry Stevenson, still a, a slender guy. He's bulked up a little, a little bit stronger, but he has really turned himself into a player for the Cats. Yeah, no, he became a real solid player down the stretch last year, became a better scorer. We always knew he could block shots. He's got a lot more confidence. I mean, Kentucky's a disappointment here tonight. I don't care any way you want to cut it for me. It's a disappointment yeah. watching them perform offensively and defensively. They were down 15-2, to two, so it was a disaster right out of the gate for the Wildcats. Deion Thompson's had the big night so far for Carolina, but everybody's gotten it on the act for the heels. I mean, I wrote on my website, if you go to my website, a story about Kentucky prior to the loss of VMI, where I thought they're going to surprise people this year because of the arrival of now Patterson healthy, Jody Meeks healthy. I thought that cast with the addition of Liggins and Miller, I thought they were going to move up a level. But I'm going to tell you, unless they really regroup, now they got some wins coming up. I mean, if they don't beat the likes of Longwood and Delaware State, I mean, then there's Trouble City. I mean, they lost last year early to San Diego, but that was that's not a, a bad loss. A San Diego yeah. beat Connecticut in a tournament. Yeah. San Diego beat Gonzaga. I was there. I spoke to the guns. I spoke to the San Diego team about four or five days ago. And I'm telling you, I'm very impressed with Bill Greer and his kids. They lost a tough opener. They lost to Vegas, and they played without two starters, Kit Tremaine Johnson and Paul May. And when they get them all back, they're going to be tough in that conference. Yep. West Coast Conference, Gonzaga, St. Mary, San Diego. Final 10 seconds now of the first half that has been dominated by Carolina. I think the Zags are one of my teams right now. I'm talking about for a Final Four. Yep. With Heifel and Day, Good. I think Mark Fuse Club's going to be really... This might be a year a team like a Gonzaga really breaks in from a non-highly publicized conference and gets to the Final Four. And they're part of the Saturday Prime Package after the new year. They'll host Memphis. We're going to all kinds, but coming back here to Carolina, going to Notre Dame. The Golden Dome, going the to Irish, Wisconsin. it's become a basketball Boston, school. Notre right. Dame's become a basketball yep. school. My Bray, yep. they're going to build a statue for him down here <laughs> like they did for Lou Holtz. Meeks absorbs the punishment and will get back to the line. Roy Williams not happy with the call just a second ago. Roy is such a competitor. I think, as I told one writer who interviewed me, how lucky they are in this area to have two coaches of the stature of Mike Krzyzewski and Roy Williams, only eight miles apart, both solid Hall of Famers. Yep. Think about that, within eight miles apart. Both teams picked top ten this year. Carolina, the consensus number one preseason. Patterson will go out for the final second. Boy, Darius Miller comes back in. Boy, I love that 97 Kansas team. That was the team that was beaten by Arizona, and that was the year Arizona beat three number ones to be able to win the national title, and they were fifth in the Pac-10. And by the way, we want to wish the best to Lute Olsen in retirement. Wish him nothing but health, happiness. He gave so much to college basketball. Good if it goes. It does not, but just about everything else went right for Carolina, including forcing turnovers. Kentucky coughed it up. 17 times wow. in a disastrous first half. And that's one of the reasons they are down 16 points to the break. Carolina actually could have more than the 41 points they have, but stifling defense they have held Kentucky to just 25. Roy Williams is with Aaron Andrews.
17 turnovers for Kentucky. What have you guys done to kind of take over defensively? Well, we're more active than we were in the first game against Penn, and it, it's got to be a frenzy for us. You're playing at home, the crowd's helping you, and now what we've got to do is take that energy level and be smarter on the offensive end. We missed some great opportunities, missed some free throws, but I like the frenzy we're doing on the defensive end of the floor. Deion Thompson, a big first half so far. What's been key for him? Uh, make his free throws at the end, so I'm in a better mood. <laughs> All right, well, I'm sure he'll tell him about that, Dan. All right, Aaron, thank you very much. Well. All coaches have things to worry about at halftime, even if their team is playing well. Carolina's up 16. Reese Davis to the gang coming up with a UPS halftime report right after this break. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bud Light. The difference is drinkability and Verizon Wireless. Welcome to the UPS Halftime Report. Now one loss in the Wayne Ellington on the alley-oop, and North Carolina has a 41-25 lead at the half, and honesty compels me to say the game is not as close as the score indicates right now. Reese Davis along with Hubert Davis, Jay Billis, Digger Phelps, and Bob Knight, and Digger Unofficially, North Carolina forced Kentucky into turnovers in four of the first seven trips down the floor. First four minutes of the game took the Wildcats right out of it. Well, it was a silent force that we said that we're going over players for each team early, and look who took it up. Deion Thompson, he came out, he was the force to generate the defensive rebounds, the offensive scoring punch, and he just put Carolina in a position when they jumped out 15-2. to two. And from that moment on, Kentucky, no game plan to get back into this game. Well, you know, one thing early in the ball game, maybe midway through the first half, uh, Kentucky had more turnovers than they had points. North Carolina had more offensive rebounds than Kentucky had points. So it started right from the beginning. And I think Reese's comment, this could be a lot worse than it is. Yeah, because North Carolina has missed free throws. They've missed some opportunities on offensive rebounds. And you know, when you look at Kentucky offensively, you can't tell what they're trying to do. You know, they're, they're dribbling the leather off the ball in one spot. <laughs> and they're getting no movement. The ball's not moving from side to side. And the truth is they cannot handle the basketball right now. And if you can't initiate any offense, you're going to have this. Mm -hmm. I mean, they should be down 25. They're fortunate they're still, you know, relatively close in this thing at 16 down. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Coach. Deion Tom and has improved so much from this year to la from last year to this year. And this is a guy that can score down low on the post. He can rebound the basketball. But more importantly, he's dunking the basketball. I think in the first two years, he was laying it in when he was in down low on the post. Now he's dunking the basketball. And you look at Kentucky. In order to win this game, they had to take care of the basketball. 17 turnovers in the first half. Established Patrick Patterson. Six points, five rebounds, two fouls, and only three a shot attempts. And, Jay, they haven't even gotten to the free throw line. Well, they can't see Patrick Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> to the action. Yeah. They are looking the other way. All Ty Lawson and other what defenders have seen are, are the big numbers on their backs and their names. What they you got to do. Kentucky. They're but, not facing the, they're facing the basket. But here's how you avoid those turnovers. You go to a dribble entry, run the way screen for Patterson. You got to have him attack two freshmen. When you got Zeller but and Davis. Dribble entry. You got to be entry, able to dribble. Nevertheless. <laughs> no game plan. To Nobody get the can dribble. Inside, no screens to get it inside. How, however. However. <laughs> nevertheless. However. However, there is nothing they're going to be able to do to get this ship floating in the right direction. <laughs> Tonight or the rest of the season. There's yeah. not a lot of hope right now. I mean, you're certainly not. You got that right. The and season. Uh, I, they, got, they got issues, Kentucky. Well, Kentucky is certainly playing hard, but not playing very well at the moment. Stephen Curry and Davidson in a battle with Oklahoma get you up to date when we come back. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Back in Chapel Hill, it's not a good thing if you're Kentucky and you have more turnovers. Then you do field goals and assists put together. 17 turnovers. 
A mere five assists, and North Carolina is slamming Kentucky 41 to 25. Davidson playing Oklahoma over on ESPN2. Steph Curry started the NCAA tournament run a year ago, and Blake Griffin, Jay, an opportunity to be a player of the year candidate. Well, he's just a monster. He's averaging almost 19 rebounds per game, 85% from the field in his first two. He's a great, great player. That quick release from Curry inside to tie the game at 11. What about the freshman Willie Warren? Well, I mean, this is a guy that can shoot from the outside, and you have that inside-outside tandem for Oklahoma. This could be the favorite in the Big 12. Seven-point lead for the Sooners right now. You look at Davidson right now. How good do you think they are compared to last year's team? I don't think they're as good as last year because they lost Jason Richards, the guy who had the ball in his hands all the time, and Thomas Sander. He was the guy that set all the screens that right. got uh, Stephen Curry right. open. Right. Well, as far as the mid-majors this year, Digger, anybody you see stepping up making some noise? I think Middle Tennessee is going to surprise people. When you take a look at what they've become, they got five seniors on that team, starters back, and Desmond Yates, a great player. Middle Tennessee from the Sun Belt is going to surprise people, not just winning the conference, but ending up as a first-round win in the NCAA tournament, moving to that second round. Now, I know it's very early. You don't want to overreact. As Coach said in the pregame, you need 10 games or so to know what kind of team you have. But right now, Kentucky is not very good. They're down 16 here to North Carolina. What have you seen in the first half that stuck out to you, Coach? You no, know, the one thing I think we have to be careful of here, Kentucky's being beaten by the best team in the country, the very best team in the country tonight. Now, what they have to do is go back from this, whatever happens in the second half, and say, we don't have to play North Carolina again. Mm -hmm. We've got to get to a point where we can start beating the teams on our schedule, and they're going to have to do that in practice. Their practices are going to have to be better. They're going to have to get better through practice between now and these games coming up the rest of this month and in December. So Kentucky uh, schedule is not going to be quite this tough. Still, we have Miami and some other big games coming up. When we come back, we'll uh, get you ready for the second half and see if North Carolina can continue to put it on the catch or maybe KY has a rally. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. And NCAA Basketball 09. Be proud. Be loud. Vote online for the toughest place to play. Welcome back to ESPN's College Hoops Tip-Off Marathon, presented by Samsung. Behold, we're here in the Dean Dome, Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Aaron Andrews, excited to be bringing you this game. And we have seen a very impressive performance by Carolina. As you mentioned, as the game day guys mentioned, this could be more than 16 points. And remember, they're without the player of the year in Tyler Hansborough and a very good player in Marcus Ginyard. This Carolina team, if healthy, is loaded. Yeah, you know, I, I thought it was really impressed with the way they executed it defensively. I thought the pressure on the ball was really outstanding. They forced 17 turnovers. They took Kentucky and disrupted any offensive set that they tried to run. Offensively, I thought they got good ball movement, they got good shots, and I was really impressed with Davis. I think he's going to be special. Stevenson, I, I mean, he's transferred, but Thompson yes. was very effective. Yeah. I thought Thompson played well. Stevenson, by the way, is down in Southern Cal now. Deion Thompson, 14 points. Six rebounds in a terrific first half. For more, let's go to Aaron Andrews. Well, Dan, I was standing outside of Kentucky's locker room, and I didn't even have to stand very close to hear head coach Billy Gillespie's very spirited halftime speech. Dan, I haven't really heard anything quite like this before. If the paint was peeling <laughs> from that wall, I got to tell you, basically the message was you got to keep your poise. You can't get rattled, and we need you to battle back. For Patrick Patterson, Patterson, Dan, and only his three shots that he's attempted, the message post up, and you gotta look for him more. I tell you, I heard some things in there. Well, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Family show, EA. Keep it to yourself. Patterson only shot three. He made all three, and a good start of the second half for Kentucky as Meeks knocks down the three. Now a foul on the inside 
going against the Wildcats. What are the Tar Heels doing to keep Patterson from getting the ball? Well, they're doing a great job disrupting the perimeter passing ability. They can't get the ball inside. See right there, he was wide open, clapping his hands, but they missed him. See, here he is trying to get post position. The key is you have to get the ball at the right time, and they do not have a distributor on a perimeter who can really find him at the opportune time. And one of the big messages from Roy Williams in the shoot-around today was pressure on the ball. Make it tough for the guards to get a clean look into Patterson in the paint. Exactly. You don't want them to have the great vision to be able to make that pass. We've got Thompson, I believe, called for the illegal screen. It'll be a foul going against Deion Thompson, his second. Let's check out some of the stats from the first half. And Jody Meeks, who had 39 against VMI a few nights ago, leads Kentucky with 11. Deion Thompson with a big first half. The huge problem, obviously, 17 turnovers in Carolina converted them into 17 points. You know, if you're North Carolina right now, you've got to be really very careful of complacency. You can't believe the game is over. I mean, this is a 13-point game with a three-point shot. A kid like Meeks gets on fire, you got yourself a battle. So Roy Williams wants them to keep that intensity. Meeks with some intensity, but he's met at the rim by Zeller. Zeller with the block shot. I tell you, Zeller and also Davis are going to be such plus players coming off the bench. Tyler Zeller, a legit seven-footer, getting stronger by the day. There's the rotation over. His brother's playing at the fighting yep. Irish Golden Dome. You know, I mentioned Stevenson transferred at halftime. He's at Southern Cal right now. Alex Stevenson wanted to be closer to home. Good position inside by Thompson. And once a guy that size gets that close to the rim, you can't do anything but foul him. And Perry Stevenson has picked up his third. You know, I really don't know the whole situation with Stevenson, but there are a lot of kids who are transferring and make requests that they want to be closer to home because illness, et cetera, yeah. in a family. Yeah. I think a lot of times if you were to reevaluate a scenario, many of the times they're transferring because of one factor, playing time. Well, the playing NCAA time. The NCAA looking at each situation case by case, deciding whether or not to wave uh, whether or not the player has to sit out for a year. Lawson trying to go by Meeks. Nice pass. Zeller from 15. He can shoot the ball. He's one of those skilled big players. He's got great pass. I tell you what, his mother is the sister of a tough, tenacious dominant that Al Eberhardt played years ago with the Pistons. Harry Stevenson, and a block is the call as Zeller came over to help but evidently didn't get there in time. Roy wants to see Zeller rebound a little bit more. He had 18 against Penn. There's the kick out. There's square in the body. So you always have to be alert offensively with the penetration. Oh, there's the block. Didn't square his body. Stevenson had already lost the ball when he collided with Zeller as well. So a break potentially for the Cats. I ran into a couple of Kentucky people, a couple of journalists. The first word was... Point guard play. Point guard play. That's all I kept hearing. Point guard play. Well, they go to the uh, high-low right there. Patterson into Stevenson, and Stevenson draws the foul. How about these numbers against VMI for Stevenson? And again, things are inflated because of the pace at which VMI plays. But Perry Stevenson had 20 points, 14, 14 rebounds. rebounds, and four blocks. And, and from a negative comes a positive. When Patterson got hurt last year, Stevenson stepped into the void and really became a solid player. Hey, if you would say two players, a perimeter guy had 39. He has 20. You would say they walked out with a W no, at home. No. You wouldn't believe yeah. they lost by eight. But try this. They not only lost by eight. They were down at one time by 26. A 14-point deficit. It could be worse for the Wildcats. And Lawson is fouled. Will it be Stevenson or Meeks? I Lawson's got great control of that basketball. You think about Kentucky and that SEC, Tennessee with Tyler Smith certainly going to have a yep. big year. They got a kid, Scotty Hobson from out of Kentucky, who they think is going to be special. Florida's Bobby, got a, a lot of young talent yeah. too, don't you think? Bobby Mays yeah. playing now, yeah. former Oklahoma player playing for Tennessee. Florida, Kalatis and company. They lose Jay Lucas, but Lucas really wasn't happy that they moved him over to the second slot to put the ball in the hands of Kalatis. But Kalatis, Warner and company, they're going to be a good basketball team. Number four on Stevenson. So a valuable player has to sit out for an extended period for Kentucky. Thompson left wide open. Missed the baseline jumper. Danny Green hits the floor hard but he's okay. Out of control at the other end. It will stay with the Wildcats. 
They need a spurt. Somehow they got to get a spurt going. And Billy Gillespie's got to find a way to get this club with some good athletes to really extend defensively and to really play with some emotion on the defensive side. Well, another turnover is not going to help the cause. Wide open, Ellington steps in for the mid-range jumper. It's sweet. It's nothing but nylon. MBN, Mr. Ellington. One of the great shooters in America. He's got eight tonight. He's got a name of one of the great jazz people of all That's time. Right. The Duke of Ellington. 19th turnover. Watch how he squares his body. Great. Look at a little fake right there. Look at him square his body. Oh, what a great look. What a great look. I love the way he squared his body. He went through a time last year where he really struggled with yeah. his shot. He and was really rushing it. And he struggled in the first game against Penn, which was 5 for 15, scored 13 points on the night, but always a threat to light it up. They like playing with each other. You can see that they really enjoy playing with each other. That bad shot right there. And Zeller with a bad foul. Number three on Tyler Zeller. I mean, you can't talk enough about what the presence of Tyler Hansbrough does to this team. I haven't seen many a player in my career at ESPN, it's my 30th year, that plays the passion of that young guy, plays with his feeling on every possession, plays it like it's the most important possession, and that becomes contagious to everybody he plays with. And again, if you weren't with us earlier, he has a stress reaction in his right shin, did not play, has not played. Again, for the latest on when he might be back, let's go to Aaron Andrews. Well, Dan, just to reiterate to everybody, Roy Williams told us today he would like to get Tyler Hansbrough on the court with his teammates in Maui. But the key phrase, you just don't know what's going to happen from there. And guys, I wanted to add, you know, I said to Billy Gillespie today, is this the time to play North Carolina with Tyler Hansbrough out? And he said, Dan, honestly, I wish Hansbrough was playing. He's one of my favorite players to watch, and he's such a great example to prove to other college kids, hey, come back. Play for your senior year. You know, the NBA can wait. Dick, I know you love that. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I would have done, Aaron, if I was coaching, you asked me that. I said, I love Tyler, but I want to see him on video, and I don't want to see him against <laughs> my club. I want to see him the next game. Count the basket for Ramon Harris, but a great point made by Billy Gillespie that he's worried that Hansbro getting hurt will make some juniors worry about coming back for their senior seasons. And Billy Gillespie, obviously, as a college coach, wants to see as much talent in the college game as he possibly can. I think kids really got to listen to the right people and make those decisions. Look at North Carolina. You don't win with just a bunch of individual stars. You win with guys that buy into the system and play as a unit, have some good role players. I mean, it's not in baseball. The Yankees have a selection of all superstars. That'll go get Sabathia and Teixeira. But you know what? You don't win in October. You win with role players as well, like when they have Rochus and they had O'Neal. Give the Rays some the love. Rays, Give the, the Rays, Rays some love. The Rays. That's right. <laughs> the Rays were a perfect example of $40 million payroll. Right. You sat through nine years of bad baseball. You deserve it. I couldn't give away my tickets. Now everybody wants them. <laughs> Lawson short on the floater. Patterson rips it down. It was 16 at the break. It's 14 now. Kentucky trying to close the gap. They're going to find a way to get Patterson some touches. It was Danny Green getting a finger on the pass, forcing the turnover. Well, the pass was telegraphed. Yeah. It was a Marconi special. It was telegraphed. I mean, I one eye and I could see that ball was going right there. Kentucky down by 14 here at the Dean Dome. Kevin Agani here in the studio on ESPN2, a top 25 matchup. Living up to the billing, number 14, Oklahoma leads. Number 21, Davidson, 38-32. Steph Curry with 17 points. Blake Griffin, four points, but 10 rebounds. So right now, Oklahoma in complete control. Next sports center after the game. Let's go back to Chapel Hill. Dan Schulman and the mayor of Sarasota, Dick Vitale. <laughs> hey, tomorrow, are you going to come to Sarasota? No. I'm no. Going to New York. See, that's the key. I'm going to be at the Broken Egg signing my new book, Sounds and I wanted you there to treat you a nice omelet. Come down there, 10 <laughs> I'll tomorrow take a morning. Rain I'll be down. I'll be down. Uh -huh. You got to come down. I got to bring Dan Steer down here, too, our coordinating boss who gives us our assignments. He is our coordinating boss. You know, Mike and Mike told me they're going to come down to the Broken Egg. They've heard so much yeah. about it. Those guys do a phenomenal yeah, do. job. I'm there every Monday yeah. morning with them. They're terrific. Great listen and watch. They're a terrific yeah. people, too. Miller the kick. Meeks, not shy tonight. In and out on the three. Rebound Davis. 
I really don't think you want him to be shy. I think he's their one real offensive threat. He's just got to be able to, to find a better shot. That was a pretty good shot right there. Injured a lot of last year, only played 11 games, had a, a hip injury, needed surgery for a hernia as well. He's talented. I think this Kentucky team's going to get a lot better than what we're watching here. Lawson inside, had it altered, got it back, reverses, and lays it in. Nicely done. One of the one thing he possesses is great body strength that he can convert in traffic for a little guard. Hounding Porter now with the other end. Five minutes into the second half, a 16-point lead for Carolina. And to me, that's been one of the factors here tonight. The pressure by Lawson on the ball, much better than I watched last year. Harris, a baseline drive, and he's called for the offensive foul. Now, one of the saddest moments in recent history in the Kentucky basketball program was the passing of Bill Kitely, Mr. Wildcat, the equipment manager since 1962, but so much more than that for Kentucky basketball. His chair will not be used this year. Kentucky players, the K on their uniforms is in black this year. One of the most beloved people in the history of the Kentucky program. Oh, just a love guy. I used to love always seeing Bill. He always had such a warm comment. He's so generous, just a beautiful human being. I know when Rick Pitino was there, he just loved him and wearing a patch in his honor. It's great to recognize people that play a factor in a program that a lot of people aren't aware of. And he was such a vital part of Kentucky basketball for so many years. You can see the Mr. Wildcat patch and the K in black on the Kentucky uniforms. Let's go to Aaron Andrews for more. Dan, just to add, you know, this is Kentucky's very first road trip since 1962 without Mr. Kiley. It was something everybody was talking about today, the shoot around. And a lot of great memories, a lot of good stories. Billy Gillespie talking about how he wasn't stingy with the equipment. You see a big three right there, but he was also very cautious. Who he gave it to? He gave Billy Gillespie three pairs of socks last year. That was it. That's all he got. Billy Gillespie said a couple months later, he said, hey, I, I need some more socks. Mr. Kiley said, I gave you three pairs at the beginning of the season. Wasn't that <laughs> That's enough? It. I tell you one thing, Aaron, he was like Santa Claus with me. He gave me a lot of Kentucky shirts <laughs> and sweaters. I tell you, I loved them. Well, more turnovers. It continues to play Kentucky. They've coughed it up now 23 times. Just seven assists for the Wildcats. Thompson with a soft touch on the baseline jumper. He's really got that quick move. A turnaround, Jay. I tell you, who are you going to beat turning the ball over 23 no, times? Nobody. You can line up with Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Howie Schwab, Dan Steer. We could take Reese Davis, Jay Billis, and we'd beat them to turn the ball the over. Bench. I mean, come on now, 23 turnovers? 52-33 Carolina. Now Carolina gives it away. Ramon Harris. He's a good athlete. But I was saying earlier, I really think the Kentucky team, Billy Gillespie will have a way to get into their heads and get them a play on the defensive side. The key's going to be trying to find some point guard play. He has to find that to be able to get their game. But remember this, they're not going to be playing the likes of Kentucky, of North Carolina. His track record suggests he'll get it done. He resurrected UTEP and, and brought Texas A&M to, to heights they hadn't been in many, many years. Can he do it at Kentucky to get them back to the heights that Kentucky fans have become so accustomed to over the years? I think the key player is going to be DeAndre Liggins. He really was highly rated out of high school. He's a youngster that can handle the ball at 6'6". He's got some skills, and they're going to have to really let the learning process take over and allow him to make some mistakes. Third foul on Darius Miller. Wholesale changes now for Carolina. Drew, Zeller, and Green are in. Stevenson, who's got four fouls, returns for Kentucky. I really believe the when you look at this team here, the complexion of this team, North Carolina, without hands rolling, I'll give you, I would go on record to say, they would be a legitimate top 20 basketball team. Anywhere from 18 to 20 in that category. I really, the bottom of the top 20, but they have that kind of potential. And Roy Williams is a master out of getting the most out of people. Why? It starts with great point guard play, and they have that with Lawson. Here's the backup, the freshman, Larry Drew, number 11. Fellow freshman Zeller fading away, left it way short. There's the third freshman, Davis, trying to run it down, but it's out of bounds off him back to Kentucky. A chance for us to tell you about ESPN's coverage of the NBA tomorrow night, a doubleheader that begins with it. Kia NBA shoot-around at 7.30.
Dallas and Houston early, Chicago and Portland late, also available on ESPN360.com. His Lauren Test has been a real plus for the Rockets. He gives them a defensive presence on a perimeter. You got Rose, who's really a terrific young player with the Bulls. They got a host of young players. Heinrich's out, though, with yeah. an injury, is he not? So Ben Gordon and now starting and scoring in a bunches for the Bulls, still trying to find their way. And Wild Dang as well. Yep. Vinny Del Negro coaching one of the Jimmy V's guys by the way the V Foundation now over 80 million dollars wow. has been raised and we'll be there December the 9th I oh, think I is the day New York Stephen Curry will be there right Davidson's yeah. taking part in the Jimmy V this year also Villanova in yeah. Texas will be there Rick Barnes what a job he has done with that Texas program they got a kid I think is going to be really special this year Damian James I don't think he got half the publicity right. or notoriety that he really deserved and I think he's going to be special up with AJ Abrams on the perimeter James is a double double machine Liggins is back into the game and out for the Wildcats see if that gives him any kind of a spark that's him with the ball well, he gives him size on a perimeter as well he's got to get some confidence to his game everybody on the floor is at least six five for Kentucky shot clock at six Nothing coming easy. Patterson from 12 feet away he makes gets, it count. He gets touches, he'll score. Yeah. Now it was Ligon's size that made that happen. Nobody's guarding wide open. Are you kidding me? Wrong guy. Are you kidding me? Open. I mean, you can leave Dan Schulman open, but you better not leave Wayne Ellington open. <laughs> and you better not leave Dickie V open, because he can shoot the ball with one eye and the ball don't. Meeks with the answer at the other end. Back to Patterson for a moment. He's five for five tonight. I mean, when they get him the ball, as you say, he's scoring. Yeah, he's got to get touches. They're going to find the moment when he's open and get him that ball. A comfortable lead for Carolina continues here midway through the second half. Dick's thoughts of the world of college basketball. These views when we come back. Back here inside the Dean Dome, Carolina leading Kentucky 55-39. to A very impressive performance by an undermanned Carolina team. No Hansbro, no Ginier. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale back with you here in Chapel Hill. Early in the season, V's views. What are you looking for? Some big picture stuff. Well, you know, I think one question I'll ask immediately, what about the impact of moving the three-point line back a foot? I think number two, will the Big East, for example, be as strong as everyone's advertised? I think it's going to be the best I've seen in 30 years at ESPN. I think nine teams get out. What about Memphis and Kansas will they reload after losing so many people will they be strong again and will this be the year that a team from not a big notarized conference with a great reputation get to the final four like Gonzaga like Davidson I think it'll be this ads I think it's gonna happen I really do think they're gonna be sensational this year all right let me get a bonus view from you give me one team that if they play as well as they can is the biggest threat to North Carolina Assuming wow. Carolina's healthy and as good as everybody thinks they are, give me one team that's a threat. Oh, I think Connecticut. I think Connecticut with their size, with their agility, and the toughness of their coach. When he's had the battle, he's battled three battles with cancer, Jim Calhoun. No game is going to affect that guy in terms of a game being so tough. He's so courageous. I sat with him at a Red Sox game after he had gone through treatment with his wife was there. And just uh, my heart goes out to Jim. I really does. And I wish him all the luck in the world. But I think Connecticut, and I'll tell you this, watch Pittsburgh. They just put the hurt on Miami of Ohio, who's a good basketball team. I watched them really play tough against UCLA. Charlie Coles' kids, Pittsburgh dominated them. Well, Vance Fields back from a foot injury, and he's the, the, the point player. guard. Yep, he's the guy that really gets them going. Inside, look at Davis. Holy cow. I tell you, Davis, Zella, Thompson, they are going to be such assets, and they're going to get better and better because the presence of Hansbro is going to give more space for them to operate. Davis is not a big, bulky guy. He's 6'10", about 220, but Roy Mill uh, Williams was talking about how strong he is for a guy of his size as Patterson gets the friendly bounce. Davis just a nose for the rim, a nose for the ball, and that was a big-time move to the rim by the freshman. Kentucky has to get a spurt to get a little life, even to get themselves a little confidence. One thing about them, they've come out and they've challenged and they've played a lot harder here in the second half. 
The lead has remained just about where it was at halftime. It was 16 at the break, and it's been in that vicinity most of the second half. You would think any team that turns the ball over as much as they have in the 20s would be blown out here by a big margin. Danny Green has his shot rejected. It'll be Carolina ball with three on the shot clock. We are into hour 23 of the College Hoops tip-off marathon presented by Samsung Behold. We are here in North Carolina, the Dean Dome, the Dean E. Smith Center, the home of the Tar Heels, the number one team of the nation. We've got a 14-point lead on Kentucky. Oklahoma Davidson over on ESPN2, and Arizona's coming up after that game. Shot got off in time. Wouldn't drop. Rebound Patterson. You know, you look at North Carolina, I think the ACC, everyone talks Carolina and talks certainly Duke. But watch out, Clemson. I think Oliver Purnell's club. They've had some good wins already over a good Temple team. Beat Texas Christian, won a tournament. I think Wade Forrest is going to be really an improved basketball team. Meeks, and it won't fall. And Miami, a very strong team. Yes, we're going to see them here with Jack McClinton, outstanding guard. We're going to see them here for a Saturday prime game in the middle of January. You know, Frankie Haig, one of the better young coaches in America, was formerly an assistant under Rick Barnes, and McClinton could shoot the ball. They got a kid amino, though, when you talk about, you talk Wake Forest, he is going to be a special diaper dandy. Let's take a look now at EA Sports' toughest places to play, and obviously this building is one of them. And that's because of the talent that North Carolina has year after year. Look at the record that Carolina has overall in this building and under Roy Williams, 71 and 9 under Roy Williams in this building. My friend, that's why you're one of the best I've ever worked with. You're so on target. You made one great point there that jumped at me. You said the talent. <laughs> Every place we talk about, yeah. well, it's tough at Duke. <laughs> it's tough down there in Rupp. Yeah. It's tough down there in Kansas. Why is it tough? They all They're got good. players. They got players. <laughs> Yeah. baby and that makes it a little tough <laughs> the crowd is excited because they got something to cheer for and their best player sitting over there in a suit tonight but nice so far pass. carolina oh. hasn't missed them thompson will be called for the foul one of the few opportunities kentucky has had to get out and run and get an easy look at the rim you know i mentioned kentucky's got some good kids coming in and john hood and G gj villarino and certainly in orton they tell me that daniel orton is going to be an absolute special player at 610 but look at north carolina's class with john henson 610 from out of he's going to be a special player dexter strickland from out of elizabeth new jersey He's supposed to be really special. Leslie McDonald, a perimeter player from New Jersey. How's he coming to Jersey getting all those guys? <laughs> What's Rutgers and Seton all doing? And then there's the Weir kids down there from Huntington Beach, California. North Carolina, if you can play, they're going to find you. Roy Williams has got it going here in Chapel Hill, the national championship of 2005, the preseason number one team here heading into 08 09. And he said, I like being preseason number one. Sure. I like it. That means we're pretty good. A lot of guys want to make excuses and out of the boxes. Watch Notre Dame this year in that Big East. Hey, out in Maui, Carolina could play Notre Dame. Carolina yeah, plays Sean nice. out in the first round. Then they'll play Alabama or Oregon. If they get to the final, the top two teams on the other side of the bracket are Texas and Notre Dame. It could be possibly Howard Doty and uh, yeah, Howard Doty going head-to-head yeah. -head with Hansbrough. And it's Zeller against Zeller, too. Yeah. Patterson, nice, nice move. move. He's got great hands. Yeah. He's going to be a terrific player. There's no doubt about it. Patrick Patterson's going to be a terrific player. Seven for seven, 14 points and eight rebounds for Patrick Patterson. They just got to get into his offensive rhythm to be able to get him more touches. Past the midway point of the second half, Carolina's been in control the whole night. I think Longwood and Delaware State are going to pay big time for the first two games. Ellington's going to make people pay this year if he keeps getting open looks like that. Well, you know, with the presence of Hansborough inside, he's going to get a lot of open looks. Unselfish basketball all night long from the Tar Heels. See, the question is, with a shooter like that and the extension of the line, will the defense now have to extend more and allow for better spacing inside to get the ball to your post player? Well, we've seen Carolina hurt Kentucky from the outside with Wayne Ellington. How about the freshman, Ed Davis, hurting him on the inside, all heels.
Well, Kentucky and North Carolina, two of the great programs in the history of college basketball. Go online right now, the poll on ESPN.com. Which of these two programs has been the greatest between the two of them over the course of their long histories? Can you imagine the argument between Carolina fans and Kentucky fans over that? Well, I don't think a Kentucky fan is going to say North Carolina or North Carolina no, fans not going to say Kentucky. But they'd get it. And now tonight, it's been a mismatch. It's been all Carolina. They're up 18. I want to give an evaluation of someone that played basketball with the North Carolina team, Barack Obama. I'm going to tell you this, Mr. President, mid-range game, average. <laughs> Take the ball to the basket, average. Ability to dominate the ball, superior. <laughs> I will say mid-major at best. At three best. star wow. out of a five, he gets a three. He goes to a mid-major level to play hoops. I want to get invited to the White House and play him one-on-one. -on -one. Jody Meeks, another three. 19 points after 39 against VMI in Kentucky's first game. Jody Meeks going to score a lot of points. But someone's going to have to find a way to get the ball inside the pass. Ellington rejected from behind by Stevenson. Stevenson, a good defensive effort. Harris to save. No, he didn't. It'll go as another Kentucky turnover. I mean, you talk about possible players of the year. I think Stefan Carvey's going to give a challenge to Hensbro. I think Haringoti's certainly going to do that from down in Notre Dame. He had a big game in his first game. It was against Cupcake City, but he had a big game. Blake Griffin could be on that list out of Oklahoma. He might be another year before if he stays in school. Not uh, sure that's going to happen. Yeah, I know. He's projected very, very high. They love him. Yeah. They love his skills. They got a good freshman down there, Willie Warren, as well, down in Oklahoma. Jeff Capel, young coach on the sideline. Thompson's had a big night. Misses the turnaround, rebound Meeks. They've been unable, really, to blow Kentucky out, but Kentucky's been unable to make a run and get back into it. It seems as, as if it's been between 14 and 16 the whole half. Patterson, again, he still hasn't missed. Eight for eight. They did a better job. They found him right away. There was a little rhythm to their offense. Five getting a little restless now. Lawson using the screen and missing the elbow jumper. Rebound, Kentucky. See, they need to score right here. Get a little confidence. They haven't been able to get a spurt. He's trying to post a little bit more effective inside. He missed him. See how he was yeah. wide open? Meeks comes off the screen. Not there. As soon as that big guy makes that spin move, he makes that single reverse and posts his body. The ball's got to beat him. The best guy I've watched in my 30 years in feeding the post was up at the Dome, Syracuse. Pearl, Pearl Washington. Yeah. Oh, the Pearl. He made my top 50 in my new book as one of the best 50 players in my 30 years. The big book signing today in Chapel Hill, right? Yeah, it went great. A little short for Zeller. Stevenson with another rebound. Kentucky is 10 for 16 shooting here in the second half. Billy Gillespie will take a timeout. If they could have hung on to the basketball tonight, they'd be right in this. As it is, it's down to 13. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by the Samsung Behold. Amazing phone meets amazing camera. Red Lobster, taste the difference wood grilling makes. Now at Red Lobster. And NCAA Basketball 09. Be proud, be loud. Vote online for the toughest place to play. How about this in the North Carolina Basketball Museum here at the Smith Center? A letter from Mike Shashevsky to Michael Jordan saying he's sorry to hear that Jordan is no longer interested in attending Duke and wishing him the best of luck at Carolina. Worked out okay for Michael. Back here at the Dean Dome, Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, an impressive performance so far by the Heels. We talked about your book signing, a new book out, all proceeds going to the V Foundation. By the way, tell us about the book. Well, you know, it's really a book that really compiles my 30 years of excitement I've had. I got my 50 best players, 1 to 50, and my 50 greatest moments, 1 to 50. And uh, today we had a book signing with a great bunch of kids so that every book they had in the bookstore they didn't have enough books a couple of hundred went look at me scribbling my name a bunch of beautiful people stopped by to visit had a great great time i'll be going around the country i'll be doing one down at purdue and one in michigan state where we can play carolina and detroit 
I'll be doing a book signing in New York City on uh, Friday. Friday yeah, busy morning. Guy. Yeah, I'm going to go all over and try to yeah. raise as many dollars as we can for the V Foundation. My proceeds, not all proceeds, my proceeds, proceeds are going yeah. to the V Foundation. Well, you mentioned a couple of games, part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge that you and I do every year. Duke at Purdue and then Carolina, Michigan State in Detroit. That's going to be a fun couple of nights. Let me tell you this. I think Purdue is going to be a top five team. Yeah. I think they're going to be sensational. Well, Robbie Hummel and I think Matt Payne has brought back that sense of pride up there at Purdue. That's going to be one great matchup with Duke. I'm worried you're becoming like Digger. He's got 78 teams in the tournament this year. I think you've got 12 teams in the top five tonight. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. You know I me know. better than that. I know you But you're right. Me. Purdue's going to be great. Oh, I think yeah. they're going to be terrific. Yeah. They're all veteran players from last year. I think they're going to have a great year. They know how to play on a defensive side. Kramer's a dynamite defensive player for them. Hummel is a versatile talent. Could be the best talent in the Big Ten. Boy, remember the games. Remember the rivalry back when Bob Knight was at Indiana. Those oh, Indiana wow. Purdue games. Unbelievable. Katie was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Some of the matchups. Used to love watching those games. 13-point lead for Carolina. Less than five minutes to go. Let me Here say Here at the this. Dean Dome, Liggins called for the foul. You know, you said Bob Knight. I sat with Bob Knight for 10 minutes tonight upstairs. In 10 minutes, you learn so much about the game of basketball. And I want to say this as well. His good friend, a guy that was a mentor, Peter Newell, yep. lost his life yesterday. And I'll tell you, the game of basketball was so much better with Peter Newell for what he has done for the game. He's impacted so many coaches with his philosophy, his teaching ability, the big men that he's really affected over the years with his big man drills. When he spoke, it was like, I mean, everybody listened because he was such a masterful communicator. And we sent our sympathy out to his family. And I know Robert Montgomery night really thought of him like a second yeah. father it was like a mentor to him in basketball he used to be with him all the time in fact the last time i saw him Pete Mills was in the presence of coach knight that was about seven eight years ago i guess patterson follows but misses his first miss of the night oh, look, look at, at the speed on thompson there to clean it up thompson says thanks a lot for missing that tie gave me another deuce 18 now for Thompson, a career high. Patterson's missed two in a row, two right around the rim, and now Carolina's got it stretched back out to 17. I will tell you this, Kentucky will make the NCAA tournament. They will find a way this year. They have too much talent. They just have to get a little bit more rhythm. They will find a way to get their 18th consecutive year to a tournament. Arizona has the longest of 24, and that could be in jeopardy this year. Kansas has 19. It's going to be interesting to see how their young people get better and better. And then you talk about Kentucky at 17, Duke at 13, and Michigan State. And by the way, Michigan State and Purdue are going to be one yep. battle in the Big Ten. Time now for the ESPN, the magazine. Big number. The number in this game is 11, which is the combined number of NCAA titles won by these two great programs. During the marathon, if you've been watching the games, you've been seeing that every game reveals a big number. Collect all nine big numbers throughout the day and return to ESPN.com after this game to enter in the sum total of the nine big numbers. And every correct entry is entered into a random drawing to win a free one-year subscription to ESPN, the magazine, and ESPN.com. Inside it, pull along and let the college hoops fun begin. It has begun here in Chapel Hill. I tell you, I had the little butterflies today. It's like the first day of school. You're a little nervous. Getting get behind the microphone. Yeah. You looked at me and said, wow, you've been doing this for 30 yeah. years. You're a little bit uptight. Yeah, you walked right in yeah. and said, Danny, you got to have your A game. I'm a little nervous tonight. <laughs> you, you know what? You've come through. you got a future in this business. You've come uh, through with flying colors tonight. I've had a lot of fun again. You're such a pleasure and a dream to work with. Oh, thank you. We'll have the uh, game day crew to look forward to spending a lot of time with them all season long as well. Boy, Deion Thompson, you got to give his effort around the rim an A-plus here tonight. He has had a great night. And that's something that Roy Williams has wanted from him, consistency and aggressiveness. There he is coming up with a steal. Turns it back over to Perry oh, Stevenson foul. and Silly a foul, foul by Davis. Silly, that's a freshman mistake right there. We'll go to the under four timeout here in Chapel Hill. Deion Thompson, a big night, and the Tar Heels are up by 17. This ESPN telecast is available in high definition on ESPN HD. A chilly night here in North Carolina. We're inside the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill, but the Tar Heels without Tyler Hansbrough, without Marcus Ginyard, have played well, and they've got a 17-point lead on the Kentucky Wildcats. The poll on ESPN.com, which is the greater program, historically speaking, between Kentucky and North Carolina. Carolina getting 62% of the votes. You know why they got that vote? 
because the Carolina people have stayed up and they're voting. <laughs> Kentucky right. people were you really upset right. with their performance. Yeah. Went to bed. Look at Ashley. She's wearing a Kentucky shirt, but she's in the North Carolina section. She lost the bet. She lost the bet. She wow. said she campaigned for Barack Obama, and she said if North Carolina voted Democratic, she would sit in the Carolina student section for this game and a woman of her word. Well, it's a woman of her word, and I think all the guys here in North Carolina are happy she's sitting in that section. Well, I know one guy who is, and he's sitting to my right. I know. <laughs> you got a smile on your face all night long. Hey, I got a kiss from her one time. I can tell I you that. Oh, you Don't told tell me my that. Wife, no, she's, not, she's not watching. My Stevenson wife. knocks him down. A little pressure here from the Cats. You know, you ask a question, what would Kentucky take from a moment like this? Well, number one, you got to take that. you got to handle the ball better. Number two, you got to figure out a way how to get Patterson more involved so it can open up some perimeter play. Number three, I see that smile. That smile is not legitimate. That smile is not legitimate there. That's the legitimate look. He is upset on the inside. He has too much pride. He's a coach that cares. He works relentlessly. This is his mistress. Coaching is his mistress. It's around the clock. He eats it, sleeps it 24-7. There's no smile looking at that board and down like they're down and they've been down from the opening yep. set yep. should have been down bigger yep. than what they are it was 15 to 2 to start the game let's go to Aaron Andrews for more and just to add on what Dick was saying Dan you know Billy Gillespie told us today in this shoot around he feels this team is way ahead of where they were last year he loves their work ethic he feels like this is the best conditioned team he's ever had but obviously one of the biggest things he brought up question in their backcourt he said we just simply don't have the experience right now well, you know, Jerry Tipton said he writes over in Lexington. I had read in his calendar, for example, a kid like Porter. He had 61 turnovers and 51 assists coming back. Liggins in the first game has seven turnovers. You can't win when your point guards are going to constantly give the ball up. You have to be able to get your team offensively into their sets. And that's the area. If you look over the years, why was Memphis so good last year? Derrick Rose, yeah. terrific point guard. What about the national championship team? Mario Chalmers, how good? Now playing in the NBA and starting for Miami. So it starts with point blank play. Patterson at the line, a chance for us to tell you that the 2K Sports Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer was on ESPN2 Thursday night with both semifinal games. First at 7 Eastern, it's number 5 Duke against Southern Illinois. And then at 9 Eastern, number 4 UCLA against Michigan. And then Friday night at 5 and 7, we'll have the third place game and then the championship. Let me just say this. You know and I know the people in television are hoping and anticipating Duke and UCLA on Friday. Yep. The question is, will Southern Illinois and Michigan spoil that party? I remember several years ago, we were all excited, waiting for a matchup with Duke and Connecticut. You got it. You got the matchup, <laughs> but at 4.30 in the That's afternoon, right. I was in the, the corridor talking to Jim Calhoun and Mike Krzyzewski as they were getting ready to play the consolation game, which we decided to televise. Right. Well, Southern Illinois, you know, is going to play some defense. That's their trademark, so they'll try to slow down the Blue Devils. And Michigan figures to be better than year two under John Beal. Yeah, I spoke to the Michigan coaches just two days ago, as you see again, another score by Thompson on the offensive glass. They think Manny Harris is going to be a special player. He's very athletic, playing on the wing. They also think the kid right on the wing is a good player. They got Sims coming off the bench. Yeah. And if they get good, solid guard play and they make their threes as part of John Beeline's system and that 1-3-1 defense could create some havoc for UCLA. Deion Thompson is fouled out, but he's going to leave the court to a standing ovation. Tyler Hasbro up there cheering for his buddy. And if I'm Mr. Thompson, I can't wait to get Hasbro on the floor because he's going to get more space than ever. Yep. The Heels hoping to have Hansbro back in Maui. They don't know for sure, but he's going to go west with them. They've got a game against UC Santa Barbara on Friday on the way out and then part of a loaded Maui field. I'm not a doctor, but I would be shocked if he doesn't play in Maui. I would be shocked yeah. based on everything we're hearing from everybody that's watched him play, watched him practice. And you would assume maybe they would phase him back in, limit the minutes. Uh, Maui's three games and three nights, but Carolina is obviously going to err on the side of caution with the national player of the year. Yeah, because the loss right now in college basketball early doesn't suffocate you and put you down like it does in football. I mean, you get beat in football, it's reading of the national titles all over. And by the way, I know why Aaron Andrews is on cloud nine. Mr. Tebow and company look like they're going to ultimately be national champs. 
Because I think they can't hear us in Alabama, no, can they? No, no, no. They no, can't no. hear us in Alabama. No, 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 no. They have no shot against the Gators when they play for an SEC title. All right. Now, you didn't, they didn't hear me say that. They have no shot. Nobody stops the ball. Bobby Fraser, the uncontested oh, layup. And Nick Saban's done a phenomenal job with the Alabama program. He has really brought it back. But I'm telling you, that Florida Gator team is like a juggernaut the way they're scoring now. Well, this North Carolina basketball team potentially a juggernaut when they get healthy and looking pretty good without Hansborough and Ginyard here tonight. And it starts with Coach and Roy Williams, Urban Meyer. I love Urban Meyer. I love his intensity. I love the passion he has. He and Billy Donovan might be the best combination of football and basketball in the nation. Green with a floater. Six for Green. Kentucky Dick has turned it over 25 times for the second game in a row to start wow. the season. It's 50 turnovers in yeah. two games. Patterson slips. There's number 26. Lawson to Zeller. Now he's limping. Zeller down and now quickly back up after hitting the support. You know, always a scary situation to see a guy get up that high and come down that hard. Comes from a great basketball family. Brother was an outstanding player, state championship in high school. Same with Mr. Zeller here. Mom Left wrist, it looks like, Dick, the way he's holding it. His mom's brother was so tough. Played with the Pistons, and I'm telling you, was a tenacious 6 6 forward, Al Eberhorn. That's way before your time. The wrist might have caught the rim. Or when he braced himself, falling awkwardly backwards there down to the court, may have braced himself with that left hand to try to lessen the contact and may have actually inadvertently made it worse. Zeller's going to lead for the night, and Carolina fans, with hands were already out, could only hope that Zeller is not seriously injured. We are moving into hour 24 of the College Hoops Tip-Off Marathon presented by Samsung Behold. Davidson in Oklahoma going on over in ESPN2 and Arizona UAB still to come half an hour from now on ESPN2. Roy Williams, though, with some concerns as we welcome you back to the Dean Dome. The concern is not what's on the scoreboard tonight. Carolina's got a comfortable 17-point lead. The concern now... The injury to Tyler Zeller would appear to be a left wrist injury. No way of knowing if it's serious or not right now. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Aaron Andrews here in Chapel Hill. You know, Dan, you mentioned 24 hours. We approach the 24th hour. When I was at the University of Detroit, I wanted to create excitement. Everyone laughed. And what I did was to create excitement. I had a 24-hour hoops hysteria. I had a marathon where every two hours I had another basketball game. The policeman played the fire right. And right down the line, every two hours until we culminated it with a red-white game with the Titans. And it created a lot of excitement, got a lot of interest. You're ahead of your time. Well, I did that 30 years yeah. ago. So now ESPN is emulating mine. They're copying my situation. <laughs> Aaron Andrews had a close look at Tyler Zeller on his way off the court. Aaron? Yeah, he walked right by me actually to go to North Carolina's locker room. And Dan, the way he was holding it, obviously there's no report. I'm not a doctor, but it was hanging in a way that you could tell he was in pain. And also, I'm going to say it looked a little swollen as he walked away. I've been on a lot of sidelines of football games lately, so I've been used to seeing these guys roughed up. But well, obviously, you hope it's nothing more. You could see right at the end of the shot there, the left hand coming down. Looks like he was trying to brace the fall, and we may get a better look here. And right there, you yeah, can see yeah, the, the, the arm and the wrist just bend awkwardly yeah. behind him, and hopefully he's not seriously hurt. Yeah, he tried to utilize the left hand to give himself some balance, and that pressure might have really caused the damage. I'm sure they're going to get an MRI. going to look at it immediately. Get an X-ray. Intentional foul on Harris. The free throws made to make it a 19-point game. Stevenson called for the offensive foul. The injury to Zeller is the first thing that's put these Carolina fans in a bad mood here tonight. And that'll be number five on Stevenson, so he will leave with three points and seven rebounds. You got to root for certain kids that have battled injuries, like the kid down in Alabama, Ronald Steele. By the way, they got beat by Mercer earlier in the year this year already. Mercer. I mean, those are tough losses. You yeah. can't lose those kind of games and really build fan interest and excitement. 
Stevenson out, and Stewart will come back in for the Cats. But you root for a kid like Steele. You root for Patterson coming back from his injury from last year. Definitely. Bobby Fraser, another guy who's missed the better part of two years with injuries. Yeah, I hope the NCL allows him that extra year. Here's Fraser coming to get the pass. We near the final minute of play here in Chapel Hill. All Carolina all night long. Hey, sound like Lionel Richie all night long. <laughs> I love that song. Yeah, North Carolina really, to me, impressed me defensively. Also impressed me with some of the play of their young people on the inside, like Davis. Thompson certainly was a major factor. But Lawson's pressure on the basketball, I can't stress that enough, because last year it wasn't there. Ellington forces the turnover, the 28th committed by Kentucky. Green came up with a loose ball. Spinning the court, good spacing. Good execution, and North Carolina gets one more game closer to Kentucky. But I have a message for all the Kentucky fans, and they're some of my favorites because they love the game so much. This team will ultimately bring them some good moments. Fraser's asking, should I shoot or let the shot clock run out? So he'll shoot. Right down the lane. Yeah. They're excited here with football, too. The job Butch Davis has done. 7 and 3 right now. Football. Hey, North Carolina showing why people think they are going to be Uno number one. It is all over here with the Dean Dome. Carolina beats Kentucky 77 to 58. The Tar Heels go to 2 and 0, and Kentucky drops to 0 and 2. Sports Center next year on ESPN. Davidson, Oklahoma over on ESPN 2, and it will be over on ESPN News in just a moment to wrap things up. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long from Chapel Hill. Sports Center is next.